Speed plus SPFX, so how to build a little bit faster. First of all, a few words about myself. My name is Marcin. I'm a Microsoft MVP in M365 Development. Currently, I'm a competency center leader at Avenga. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I blog a little bit. Uh, I have my GitHub sample repo, which you might find a few useful things, maybe. Uh, and I, uh, I am at, at uh, X Twitter, uh, however it's now called. And a big shout out to Brian. I will not share the surname because, first of all, I don't want to, I don't want to create a GDPR incident. And second of all, I'm afraid I may mispronounce the surname. But the reason I'm presenting this here is because Brian reached out to me and we started talking a little bit. And he actually said that, you know, Martin, this is a nice idea. I like it, so maybe we should present it. This is why I'm presenting. First of all, uh, let's talk a little bit about the problem I'm trying to solve. Uh, if you build a bigger SharePoint framework solution before, I'm quite confident you've seen this. So you configure the webpack in one minute, back uh, webpack takes one minute. It is a bit difficult to keep that, you know, nice, fresh, quick uh, feedback loop. So it is, uh, from build perspective, a little bit difficult to go fast, especially on big solutions. And uh, to be fully transparent, I don't believe there is anything Microsoft people can do about it because of how SharePoint framework works. I was thinking about how you can speed it up. I know we have that lovely SPFX fast set, but it's still not as, as fast as previously simple, simple app you created with Create React app, or now with Vite, it's like Vite is completely different league when it comes to, to uh, performance of, of uh, build and development in general, that hot reload, absolutely amazing. Second uh, problem I'm trying to solve is the reusability of, uh, of the code and components. In particular, even today, demo before, we see an absolutely amazing solution, which is part web, part, part, um, uh, part command set. Soon, I do hope we will have a little bit more cases with uh, with those uh, adaptive web parts and the new lovely quick view. So reusability may be a problem if you haven't already thought uh, in your solution that, oh, I want to use base uh, SharePoint context, not web part context. It can get a little bit difficult to actually reuse your code across even whole Microsoft stack. And of course, there is the, the case of your SharePoint framework web part is so great, so amazing that people want to use it outside of SharePoint and build a whole line of business up around it. Uh, which brings me to my third point, which is SharePoint context. And I remember quite vividly two or three years ago that there was a very interesting blog post by Waldek Mastikas about uh, at what level your code should depend on SharePoint context and SharePoint artifacts in general, which uh, was a little bit more. I mean, the blog post itself did not provide like hard answer to this or, the, or do that, but provided very important information. Try to limit the amount of of information you get from context and pass to your components only subset of, uh, of context. Why it's important? Because it decouples a little bit uh, our solution from SharePoint itself. Finally, that is my, I would say, nemesis a little bit. And this is service scope. I'm not sure how popular service scope uh, based implementations are in general in, in community. But this is on one hand very powerful, on the other very tricky to properly implement uh, uh, effectively design pattern or in, uh, implementation pattern. Because on one hand, service scope uh, gives you 
a very nice and fast possibility to get the dependency you need. On the other hand, if you are using any kind of service uh, locator implementation, you are always hiding uh, what actually your component and your classes depends on because they depend only on uh, service scope. And finally, if you know me, and some people here on the call I see know, uh, knows me already, I'm quite big on testability. If you ever tried running unit tests in SharePoint framework, you know it's quite difficult, uh, mostly because there are things like service scope, SharePoint context, that you have to very, for very formally mock using either just mock or vmock. It's a complex thing, difficult thing, and it makes the whole entry point for unit testing in SPF, uh, SPFX, it sets it quite high. So this is well, those are the problems I uh, I wanted to solve. Hopefully that makes sense. And by the way, if you have any questions, I'm monitoring chat. I will try to answer those questions as soon as I can. Next, the solution. So what uh, came to my mind was following: I actually don't need SharePoint to implement solutions on SharePoint, and I know this is very strong strong statement but when you think about it a lot of web parts we implement at least i implement are uh, isolated self-contained and my idea was following if i could create simple app using vita react app build my whole app in react and then just export it as a package import it to my spfx solution I can do most of my development in Vita with that super fast hot reload with all of the magic around it. Then I use Rush stack because why? Why Rush stack? Because uh, SPFX already uses Rush stack and there is beautiful, lovely, good uh, configuration file that I know will always spit out the library in format I can use in SPFX. Uh, SPFX. Thanks to that, it also forces very important and interesting thing. It forces that I have no direct dependency on any SharePoint framework uh, component, which effectively means if I want to run at some point this app outside of SharePoint, let's say in static web app, I can. So I can effectively get everything I had in my uh, SharePoint framework web part and put it somewhere else, it will work. It will be lovely. And because of that uh, few tricks in um, Sun we can uh, we can implement, it will even work almost like a single sign-on. So the authentication will be very, very fluid, very nice. Next, I can control the interface. And by interface, I mean not only the user interface, because I have a little bit more, more control over that, but also the interface uh, I want to use as my dependency, so the programmatic, programmatic interface, yes. So this is exactly what what uh, Valdek mentioned in his blog, that I can control what kind of properties, either from context or from, uh, from SharePoint HTTP clients uh, I can use. And why I like this approach? Because I hate, yeah, I would use that word, I hate that HTTP client configuration to be valid. I understand why it's implemented. I get it. It's important, but I'm always using that in V1. So why not just cut the HTTP client interface and put that in, 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 into implementation details? And finally, with this approach, I can put my components either in SharePoint. Maybe I want to put them as an Outlook app. Maybe I can go crazy and put it as a, a confluence, uh, uh, what's called widget. Or maybe I want to put it somewhere in a SAP portal. So suddenly the functionality implemented for the web part can be put anywhere as long as we can put JavaScript there. I like this. I, I consider this uh, approach good and nice. Without any further ado, let's jump into the code. All right. Here is the code. But before the code, 
let's first of all see what we are doing here. And I got a little bit tired of, of uh, building samples with Graph API and me endpoint or search endpoint. So for this case, we'll have something that uh, I hope all developers has access to because we are connecting to Dataverse from our app and we are using out of the box uh, tasks list. Do not use that introduction. I'm actually not sure if that list is used somewhere else. I just wanted to have something you can spin up, run NPM start, and you will have the same experience as you see right now. So first of all, as you can see, we are hosting that locally on my local host. We have our task list. That task list, as I mentioned before, is obtained from uh, Dataverse uh, tasks table. We have some tasks. We implement a task card. Here we implemented some edit things, lovely. We can create task even better, very nice. Now we want to put it uh, as a SharePoint uh, web part. So once again, here we have our debug mode, as you can see, and this is effectively the same component. Yes, we have our uh, card, our edit, save, discard, whatever. It's working the same, the same way. So the natural question would be, OK, Marc, how, how it happened? How did you do it? Let's start from the beginning. This is my startup project. So this is the actual app I uh, created using Vita. So the Vita. Here is my Vit config, a little bit uh, about testing. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. We have our source. In our source, I have component. In particular, I have my tasks list. As you can see, tasks list is actually a like functional component. What we are doing here, we are using task service. Let's take a look at that lovely thing. And task service effectively handles the communication with uh, with database. You may ask uh, ask me, okay, March, that's very nice, but how did you handle the authentication? And actually, how do you provide the database client? So in the demo before, we also used uh, used uh, React context. We are using hooks defined at. React context level here. I have that use dataverse, and you can use the dataverse because in our app, if I'm going to fast, let me know. Uh, in our app, so entry point, we do have authentication context provider, graph context provider, and of course, dataverse context provider. For authentication context provider, I am providing our authentication service, and I don't want to make it commercial of uh, my library, but I'm using the implementation from my library. Again, it's highly opinionated. If you want to check it out, maybe you will find it useful. The idea behind it is to effectively provide interfaces for reusable parts of SPFX, I would say. So you will find there a little bit about authentication, a little bit about search, a little bit, of course, about uh, HTTP clients as well. So we do have our authentication service. I define my client ID, internet ID from my uh, environment variables right here. And data uh, database resource is also from uh, my database, uh, from my environment variables. Once I have that provider, my task list can, of course, use my uh, Dataverse client. You may ask Martin what's the Dataverse client. So let's jump into my uh, context, Dataverse context. And here, as you can see, as context props, I have client and resource. And the client is built using authentication provider. We, uh, if we have authentication provider, we are using new uh, authenticated HTTP client and the authentication is based on our provider. So I mentioned before that interface is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more with uh, separation of, of or, so let me rephrase, I discussed interfaces so we can control how we actually uh, interact with other components. 
So in that case, our authentication provider with authentication, let's check it out. Uh, our authentication provider is very simple. We just need something that will uh, run get access token. In particular, authentication service has that uh, has also that resource parameter, so we can get access token for different resources. And of course, here you can already notice that we are actually uh, we have the same uh, same uh, signature of that uh, service as we have in SharePoint IAD token provider factor or token provider. I don't remember the name. We will get to that in a second. So we have our interface for authentication service. And in Dataverse context, we have also our inter interface for IHTP client, which once again is very similar to the signature of SP, uh, SP HTTP client, AAD HTTP client, HTTP client, all of that magic from SharePoint, but uh, without that uh, version tag. Lovely. So here is our app, our app runs, and to give you a little bit of, of uh, context, Let's say I would like to add on Hoover transform uh, of scale. Lovely. I save it and I hope it's already. Oh no, I have to refresh the or it doesn't work at all because I made a typo. Are we running Hoover? Oh, of course, transform, not transform. And here you go, you can see that once I hover, there is that very subtle scaling. And the feedback loop, quite fast, quite nice. Let's now use this, uh, use the thing in uh, SPFX solution. What I've done here is I added in my package.json rush stack compiler, and somewhere there should be also Microsoft SP Build Web, which will bring us the proper configuration for Webpack. In package JSON, uh, I also have a build for SPFX, which is a good build, and here the uh, replace import meta. Implementation detail will discuss uh, this a little bit more in two weeks. Once we build it, we can npm link it, link it to our second solution, which is database tasks SPFX. Our data, the database task SPFX, already used npm link to our package. Thanks to that, oh, I'm not sure if you should see that. Please don't use that against me. Uh, but we are getting things from our linked library, so database tasks. And what we are doing in web part render is following. We are building our Authentication context provider, graph context provider, and database context provider. And here we are using, which is the most important part, we are using token provider from our AED token provider factor. Thanks to that, we get that single sign-on and consistent, uh, co consistent authentication experience. In SharePoint, the rest of that uh, or everything else is already handled in our contexts. Thanks to that, we can actually render our database tasks, which is just tasks list from our component library. And on that note, I see I have four minutes left. I believe this is a great moment to put a stop.